Okay, let's let's get started and um, with the intro slide. And uh, so, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Didier. I'm the tech lead for the HP Developer Community, and we are very happy today um, to have this session because this is the first time that we deliver a session with the entire team here. So Mathieu, Denis, and Frederick, and um, to show also the rest. <laughs> Of the of the dev community that we have a real job in addition to running the dev community, and uh, this is to work on the GLP uh, API and the developer experience. So, um, before we uh, go on to uh, go into the details of the the subject today, which is enabling business automation using the HP GreenLake platform foundation APIs, we'll uh, we'll go through a few slides about the community. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say that we we run these meetups. Um, we've been running these meetups for more than two years now. Uh, it's a monthly program, and um, I'm really proud to already uh, mention that we have a session in April and in May. Uh, the session for the next meetup will be uh, April 24th, and it will be uh, from the storage team talking about their API, uh, the DAS, that's a Service Cloud Console a DSCC API. In uh, May 29, and this is just cropped out of, of the press, we will have a, a session together with uh, Red Hat on uh, GreenLake for Red Hat OpenShift. Uh, we have, uh, so these, these meetups are kind of going in depth into a particular product or technology. We also have another program called the Munch and Learn, also a monthly program, one that we started three years ago. And this one uh, has a session in April, uh, and, and typically the Munch and Learn are a little more vendor agnostic and product agnostic. In this particular case, we'll have a, a first in, in the series as well, somebody from the recent acquisition of Atonet, Antonio Finn, that will be talking about um, some generative AI applied to uh, the business that is running, which is Telco. So that's going to be a uh, more on the AI side, similar to what we've been doing in the last three sessions with uh, Mention Learn. So if you're interested, you can go to the Mention Learn or the Meetup page. The links are there to register. I think Denis and Mathieu will also organize to have the links in the Q and A, so you can also get the links from there. In addition to um, um, to the to the, the the webinar, if you want, we also have. Other things, all the opportunity to um, to learn new um, new skills, and uh, with one program that we call the workshops on demand. So, if you uh, go to this uh, URL here, Hack Shack Workshops, you'll see that we have a catalog of about thirty workshops. Um, these are based on Jupyter Notebook technology. They're available twenty four by seven for free and ever available to anyone over the internet. So. You can check the, the catalog. You'll find things to learn about Python or Rust or about what's an API, what's a REST API, or things about um, Redfish or OneView or, uh, and a newly created one that Frederic just announced a couple of weeks ago, uh, just in time for the Tech Jam event in Atlanta, which, was, which is about the, the topic of today, which is the Green Lake platform API. So there's a workshop associated with this. We'll talk about that at the end. Fred will give a quick demo. Uh, but if you do try, um, provide some feedback. We're really uh, uh, eager to hear what you think about this uh, way to learn new technology. This is a dev community, as, as we say, or developer community. So we need uh, the community itself to help amplify and contribute. So if you are joining these events, uh, feel free to also invite other folks to join. Uh, if you think it's it's good, uh, we have a monthly newsletter that you want you might want to subscribe to because that's the best way to keep track of what we do and not miss anything. So there's a link here to uh, to sign up for the newsletter. Another thing that is not well known is we have our own Slack workspace that uh, we created some years ago, and uh, we have lots of channels there to discuss the different product and technology that uh, we have at HPE. There's one, for example, dedicated to the HP GreenLake API that you can ask questions to and help other uh, with answer by answering questions. So you can sign up to this particular Slack uh, and then join uh, the conversations. We have a Twitter account, or sorry, an X account, I should say now. And then if you're an SME, you can even go further and contribute uh, to the community by either writing a blog, and we're always on the lookout for new blogs, uh, we have a, a content management system, a CMS that is 
based on GitHub and uh, using rich text format or markdown. So it's pretty easy to submit a blog. We'll go through a review process with you over uh, GitHub, pretty straightforward and standard. And then uh, we can expect to have a blog or you can expect to have your blog within a, a week or so, depending on the original content. So don't hesitate to share uh, some of your knowledge. Of course, this is external blogs, so you make sure you have no um, intellectual property that you, that cannot be disclosed there. So, but sharing is always good. So uh, think about it and uh, don't hesitate to contribute. You can also reach out to us to deliver a meetup, uh, such as this one, uh, or participate to events when we look for staff or for events. Um, and also, if you want to work with Fred, uh, you can propose a new workshop on demand because what we have built is a framework where you can plug additional content. So we are interested if you find there's a gap in the catalog, and I'm sure you'll find gaps, uh, we can work on uh, building new content. So that's kind of uh, the dev community in a nutshell. These are all the links. This is a QR code you can scan with your phone to get all these links at once. I forgot to say, we also have a, a, a Slack, internal Slack on the HP internal that you can join. Uh, and the rest, I think I talked about. Uh, we have a Yammer group for our partners, uh, which uh, you can also, uh, we, we advertise our events over there. All right, so let's get started with the content. So the GreenLake uh, platform foundational API. So I'll turn it over to Didier to get started with. So thanks, Didier, and uh, this is the other Didier, which will be talking about uh, the uh, GreenLake API. And I'll I'll start the call and the, the, the session, and then my colleagues will uh, join me. Let me just fire the right presentation here. So there we go. So thanks for having us. Uh, this is a great opportunity to talk about uh, the GreenLake API. And um, so what we'll be talking about today is um, what is the GreenLake uh, H2 Cloud Platform? That's, don't worry, this is just one slide. Uh, what are the API that we are talking about here? What are the prerequisites to get access and use the, uh, the API? Where is documentation for the API? And that's, again, uh, that's one slide per topic, so that's going to be quick. And then we'll dive into live demonstration, because <clears throat> I think this is the most important part. In the first demo, Mathieu will show you how to use the GreenLake uh, API from the GreenLake developer portal. So you can, you can actually exercise the, the API through the documentation of the API. So that's also a, a nice feature if you want to just poke around. In, um, in the second demo, Denis will show you um, maybe more advanced if you want to use uh, Postman. I don't know, probably some of you are already familiar with that tool, but Postman is, is a tool that allows to work with different APIs. So we have created, um, uh, Postman uses open API spec. So because our APIs are all based on open API, we can, we can use the Postman and Denis has curated and build a Postman collection with everything that is available and you can load it up and start working with that. Um, and it'll show you that live. The next step after that is you might want to start writing your own scripts. So here I'll take, uh, I'll show you um, one example of, uh, uh, for example, PowerShell script that uses the API and we'll run that together from Visual Studio. Uh, we also, uh, then we'll talk about, um, What's next? What's next? What you can expect from uh, from the engineering team about uh, this API? We'll talk about the resource available to get started, and finally, Fred will come back for the last uh, demonstration on how, how to leverage the workshop on demand that we talked about earlier, and then a quick call to action. All right, so let's get started. Of course, you can ask questions in the Q and A uh, while I'm talking or while any of us is talking, and then. We'll, uh, we'll try to answer them as we go, and we'll close by looking at uh, the uh, unanswered question at the end. Throughout the uh, session, we'll also fire up a quick, uh, quick polls to collect feedback from you. Uh, so please try to help us and, and, and provide your feedback. That's always good. So quickly, what is uh, the HP GreenLake H2 Cloud Platform? I'm not going to go through all of these bits, but think about uh, GreenLake uh, H2 Cloud Platform also known as 
HP GreenLake platform for shorter or even shorter the platform as uh, HP's unified management plane for hybrid cloud. So the piece that we are really interested in uh, for, for today is uh, the bottom piece here, the H2 Cloud platform, because this is the API that we are talking about is the API for this brick. Uh, on top of that, you see we've got uh, different pieces, services that will be offered. They might also have some APIs that you already use, for example, COM, uh, storage, uh, networking, they have their own API, but they consume or they might consume as well some of the common services provided by the GreenLake uh, Edge to Cloud platform. And the, the API that we are, again, we are talking about today is API that those services can consume, but also users such as yourself could consume to manage users or resources of the platform. So the API that we are talking about is just to help and programmatically manage users and resources of the HP GreenLake platform of your workspace. So think about managing a workspace, resources and users that belong to a single workspace or a given workspace through a programmatic interface. This is very new. And um, so we're talking about something that was released for the first time in November, 2023. What we want, I already mentioned that, but this API are based on open API specs. And there is one single unified endpoint to access all of these APIs. And this is the URL. What you will find today is a set of common services that include identity and access management. So that's managing your workspace, managing identity, managing location, managing devices, subscriptions, for these devices, managing an audit log and a wellness event. With every release of HP GreenDeck H2 Cloud Platform, there are new APIs being released or APIs being modified, of course. So for February 2024, with the latest release of uh, GreenLake uh, Cloud Platform, there has been uh, two major pieces that have been added, APIs, sorry, one for service catalog, and one we call SIC or Sustainability Insight Center. So both of these are new APIs uh, that are now covered and uh, documented. So what are the prerequisites for somebody uh, who would want to access the uh, HP GreenLake platform through uh, the API? First of all, you need an, uh, an HP My Account um, to, uh, to log in to, uh, to HP GreenLake and you need a workspace. So you can, when you log in for the first time on HP GreenLake, you will create yourself a workspace for your organization, one or more, but you need at least one. Uh, you need to be an administrator for that workspace. Um, then given a workspace ID, you will have to request, and this is temporary for now, but uh, it might go away uh, in the coming months, but you have to request the fact that you would like to access the API. And this is done through a ticket, support ticket in the, user, in the user interface of GreenLake. So you will be requested your workspace ID and we will enable you um, to access the API. Once you have access to the GreenLake platform API, you will be able to generate uh, an API client cl credential uh, for the platform. Uh, maybe you've already used some other API for GreenLake such as COM or storage or Aruba and this will be an additional um, credential that you can select once you've been enabled, and it would be called HP GreenLake Platform. So once you've created your API credential, you can generate uh, access token uh, to use the API because each and every call will request uh, an API access token. And this is using this API client credentials that you generate a token. We'll go through that, so don't worry. Where do you find the documentation for all the APIs that are available? This is through the HP GreenLake developer portal. Um, and you see the URL here, developer.greenlake.hp.com. You have to be careful. And this is mostly for people with an HPE because not everything in developer.greenlake.hp.com is public. So there's a public part and a private part. If you identify and log in as an HP employee, you see APIs that might not be public yet. And we have seen this problem in the, 
in the Slack where people were asking questions about non-released API yet. So be careful when you send information to a partner or you send you talk to a customer, make sure that you're talking about something that is public. And the best way to do that is to not log into the GreenLake developer portal. So you see what everybody else is seeing and you will see the documentation uh, available. Uh, Mathieu will show you that in just a few seconds. What you find in this uh, documentation site is detail API of each detail of each API. So documentation, what are the parameters? What is the endpoint? For example, we see here logs, uh, the audit log. Um, you will see that uh, these are, as I said, open API specs that you can download and uh, you can download each individual uh, API or you can wait for Denis to tell you <laughs> about his uh, collection, which is, I think, much better because it, it has all the pieces into it and also some use cases that you can, uh, you can make use of. And there is an option that uh, Mathieu will show you, which is called try it. And you see it here on the upper right uh, green button. Uh, you can try an API provided you have created already yourself uh, an API access credential and uh, you generated the token because you will be asked for that. All right, so take a look. This is uh, all the documentation for all the calls available in the API as of today. And this is changing with every release. So, so let's go for the first demo and I will hand over to uh, Mathieu in just a second, but we'll first explore uh, the HP GreenLake platform API through the developer portal. What we will do is open the developer portal, locate one of the API. I think we focused on the audit log. Then we will go back to the GreenLake console to get ourselves a token. Then we'll copy that generated token and go back to the developer portal to paste the token and use the try it command. And we'll check the result of the API on the browser directly. Okay, Mathieu, it's all yours. Okay, so uh, starting point is the all developer uh, portal where developerhp.com you might know it. So we have a bunch of tile and including the API uh, uh, portal for GreenLake. So you can also easily uh, find it uh, within the description of uh, of the uh, GreenLake platform itself. So when you Landing on that uh, portal, you have two sections, mainly uh, the guides and services. So services is all the different API uh, made available and uh, guide are uh, the, the getting started in example and, uh, and thing like that. So as described by uh, DJ, you, you need to have uh, an HP my account. Uh, uh then you can see I mean everything is described there is that public and and partners uh and private role so i'll let you read a bit uh on that there, there is not that much but um, some important information uh we have uh also the the basics about the life cycle of, of the api um so this is most of them are, are from RFC and IETF uh, draft. So the, the naming convention, uh, the um, uh, the path, the URI, and uh, all of that is described, including the deprecation header. Also, that could be useful uh, to to follow up and to not go uh, into uh, an issue with. Um, new API and, and, and move. Um, and so still the deprecation. You have also the, the explanation of what is an alpha, what is a beta, what is stable. Uh, I heard more and more team uh, uh, talking about releasing as, as, as version uh, soon. And so, um, yeah, a lot of uh, detail and some essential uh, are kept there. So including the, the change log, the way uh, we're working. But um, this is more for guidance here um, on services. So it's um, listing all the different services made available. 
including audit log. So the, the, the one we, we choose to, uh, uh, to, to show up. So it's basically um, including a guide to uh, help understanding about what is it, where it's running, how to uh, handle it, uh, the different uh, access and permission in order to, uh, uh, so everything is, uh, is, is described. You have also an index on the, on the right, could be uh, useful. If you want to uh, uh, to go to make it uh, uh, and have directly um, to the to the to the section you you'd like, um, and in the API reference you have really the API which is described. The audit log is uh, straightforward. It's uh, get the logs and uh, so still a bit of explanation here the security the request who is going to be uh, uh, what you can accept what is um, re required what is optional sample of uh, response so what you can expect during the for the, for, um, for a reply and uh, as mentioned, you can also directly try it from here. In example, if I want to exercise the uh, uh, the API, I only need what uh, a barrier token. So that's something I can uh, get from. The workspace on the Greenex platform. So if I, if I go and uh, select um, manage workspace, uh, I can see the, the API and I have my, my own credential. Uh, I did create one. It's easy to uh, create one. Uh, you, you have a maximum of five, but uh, you choose what you need. As mentioned by uh, Didi also to get this HP Greenex Cloud Platform API, you, you need a support ticket uh, raised in order to enable it. That's going to be open widely uh, soon, so uh, no need uh, later. So I have already um, a client idea. I want to create a new one and basically to, to request, um, uh, you simply have to create a new case yeah, and uh, you select uh, yeah, what you want, workspace, because it's the workspace management, and here you have the green. This is described also uh, in a guide, so I won't bother you with that. Um, so I have a token. I can also generate uh, my token based on that. So yeah, I'm can do, I can do. And with the client secret, I get secure place. I can generate that uh, web based token. So let me. Now I have my token, and yeah, if I simply put it there, parameters. Let's go with default. So I can get uh, the output, which is, yeah, I have a two, 200, so that's uh, a good news. Uh, and I did retrieve uh, all the different log for my user here. So um, redemption management, uh, logged in with, and I did connect on that workspace. Uh, I logged in also loading workspace. Okay, so basically a lot of different things. Oh yeah, okay, device management. I did uh, play, uh, add and remove. Uh, uh, so yeah. The, this is the information you can get. Uh, you 
uh, väggen uh, you have also a code sample here so this one is the python uh, one maybe i can get them in a better visibility so you have yeah multiple ones so that could be useful also if you find some uh, some uh, 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 language you you'd like to have uh, to, to provide feedback so basic basic one is the the curl one so and um, and we have uh, also Python, so you can include that, could be passed, and uh, get that uh, into your code. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, what you can uh, get also, uh, which can be useful, is the open open API spec file, so you can download it and uh, include it uh, to your uh, to to work uh, offline and, uh, and to uh, to consume it um, a bit like to to have it in a in a post man or thing like that but uh, i think that's something um we're gonna cover a bit later with denny so didier if you want to yeah thank you Mathieu. let me uh, grab the screen back so the next topic is uh, talking about, uh, okay, you can use the GreenLake developer portal to poke around, but if you really want to do a serious exploration, there's an additional tool that uh, many people use for browsing APIs called Postman. And um, because we use open API specs, we can benefit from that tool. And what we will do in this demonstration, Denis will take care of that, is we will first um, well, then Mathieu showed you where to download the open API specs. So next step is we created with uh, Denis and the rest of the team, we created a GitHub repo in which we put, it's public and we put, uh, it's called GLP API tooling. <clears throat> it's community driven. So, which means that all the people could contribute. Thank you. And uh, we have uh, there a Postman, a Postman repo that, uh, Postman collection, sorry, that Denis will use. Uh, to import in his Postman uh, application. And then he will show you how to uh, get a token and use that to explore a number of API calls. The needs are yours. I'll stop my sharing. Um, so yeah, so uh, hello everyone. And uh, as you might know, Postman is a graphical user interface that doesn't require programming to interact with uh, applications or services that expose APIs. Um, so Postman, I, I use Postman and uh, I like to use Postman because I'm <laughs> not a, a full stack developer. And Postman provides an easy way and quick way to discover what you can do with a service API, especially with the APIs for common HP GreenLake platform services. So once you have signed up or signing uh, to your Postman account or for a Postman account, you can create your own um, collection of API codes by downloading the open API specification files from the HP GreenLake, uh, GreenLake developer portal as shown by uh, Mathieu. And then once you downloaded the open API specification files, you can import these files into your Postman to, call, to create your collection. Or you can leverage the, uh, call, the Postman collection we built for you as a starting point. The, the Postman collection is available in a um, GitHub publicly available um, repository. Uh, I will put the, the link in the Q&A section of the webinar after this short demo. So you can uh, copy paste the, uh, the link for you. Uh, so I just show you uh, here, for example, this is a GLP API tooling repository. In the Postman collection folder, you will find the files API for common HP GreenLake platform services. It's a JSON file. You just download it, import it into your Postman account, and that's it. There are still, as you can see here, the, the Postman collection is has been built uh, and design with a set of variables at the collection level. We call that collection variables. So the first step 
for you when you use and leverage this uh, Postman collection is to set some value of some uh, parameters and variables. Specifically, for example, the client ID, client secret value that you obtain when you create your API client credentials from the HP GreenLake platform user interface. Once this is done, you can, the first things you need to do is to generate a, a token or what we call an access token. So for this demo, I will assume the role of a workspace administrator for a workspace in HP GreenLake. This workspace is named uh, the Hack Shack. This is uh, uh, something we own uh, on the HP developer community. And um, so the first thing is to generate a token. The token, uh, our access token is used to make sure or to ensure that any interaction with the APIs for HP GreenLake platform services is secured, authenticated, and authorized based on the permission of the user that created the API client credentials. So here I'm using a post command, a post method. You can see it here. Um, the, in the body or data payload, you need to specify the client ID and client secret. With that, so we, we are using variables. So you, uh, these are defined at the collection level, as I explained earlier. And it's simple, simply send the, click on the send button. The request would be sent to the single sign-on URL for our GreenLake workspace. I click on send. And you see that you receive a status 200 OK. This means that this is a successful query and you get the access token. This access token, you can see that here I'm using a test script that is a JavaScript based uh, code or script that is used to save the access token value that you see here in a collection variables named BRR token. And this BRR token will be used as the authorization type for all subsequent REST API calls in this collection. So once you get it, for example, I can show you that a subsequent REST API call is leveraging or using the uh, BRR token from the collection variables because uh, we specify for each REST API call in this collection that the authorization type is inherited from the parent. And the parent is the, you can see here, the BRR token from the collection. In this query, um, it's just a get method query to uh, collect information about the workspace I'm working on. And to do that, I need to specify in the pass variable of the query, the workspace ID. Again, the workspace ID has been previously uh, set in the collection variables as a workspace ID for the workspace I am working on. And I can send, click on the send button. And I do see the, the result here. So it's again, 200 okay, means that this is a successful query. And I got information about the my workspace, the workspace ID, who created the workspace and when. Then the next step is once you, because I am an administrator, I want to get some collaborators working with me on the workspace. So I will, the next step is to invite users to collaborate on the workspace. For that, I will use the identity and access management API services that allows me to invite a user. So to invite a user here, I'm using a post method again using the URL for the identity, uh, which is identity means here, the, this is a API group name. V1 is a version one. And then we have the 
uh, users as parameters. Here I specify the email of the invited user I want to invite to the workspace. Here I'm just using my personal email address and I will receive an email when I send it. I'm going to receive an email on my personal email address. To uh, This email will invite me to create an HP account if it does not already exist and activate the account to join the workspace. You can then, so you see the message here is invited user. So this means that an email has been sent to this email address. And I can check the status of the invited user to check whether the user has joined the and has been added to the workspace or not. To the, that, I will use a get command still in the identity API services to check based on the username. I'm using a filter to check if this user has joined the domain or not. So I send it. And I can see here in the response that the user status has been verified. This means that the user has been added to the workspace. So the reason here is that I, you see, I have not activated or created any HP account because I have already created an HP account. I was during my test and experimentation of the API for HP GreenLake platform. I used already uh, this uh, person, my personal email address and I created the HP account, activated the HP account once. And now, because I sent uh, an invitation to the same email address, this uh, user is automatically added to the workspace. Otherwise, if the user is a new user and he has not activated or created the HP account, the user status will be seen as unverified. Later on, during the, the ongoing work, the user might leave the company, may change organization or roles and responsibility, and you may want to delete or what we call disassociate the user from the workspace. In this case, you can use a delete method to disassociate the user. You need to specify the user ID of the invited user in the request. And when you do a send request, you will see that you have a 204 no content. This means that this query has been sent successfully to delete the user. So my name, my personal user email address uh, from the workspace. So it's very easy to use. The next use case is to manage, for example, a set of devices and subscriptions. So uh, typically when you have a HP GreenLake uh, workspace, you want to manage not only the users, but and their permissions, but also the uh, devices and the subscriptions or license keys that you will use to manage and operate your devices. For that, you can use the devices API services to add a device. So for example, you can use a post command to add a device. This is a, a fake device here, but just to show you how to add a network equipment, for example, you can do the same for the storage or for the compute. So you have uh, in the API, the post API command to add a device for the compute. You need to specify some, the part number, the serial number, same for the network equipment, same thing for the storage array equipment. Uh, so you can do use this command to add a device. I have already added a device in the workspace. Once the, the workspace, the device is added in the workspace inventory, 
The next thing to do is that you want to manage this device and operate this device through um, typically what we call a SaaS based console or user interface. For example, to manage a compute servers, we will use HP GreenLake for compute ops management application or service. To manage a network equipment, you will use the HP Aruba networking central service, which provide a console for you to manage your devices. So to do that, first things to do, once you have added a device into your workspace inventory is to assign the device to an, a service, what or also known as an application in a specific region. Here I will add the device by specifying the device ID in the query of the device that is in the inventory. And I need to specify in the body or the pay data payload of the query, uh, the application ID or the service ID of the SaaS based console I want to assign the device to and the region. So I send it. And what you see is the code 202 accepted. So what you need to know is whenever you add a device, you assign a service to a device or you assign a subscription key or a license key to a device, these operations are all asynchronous operations. An asynchronous operation is an API operation that cannot be completed immediately. So you need to get the transaction ID of the uh, of this request, of this patch request. You see that I'm using here again a JavaScript test to collect the transaction ID value from the response here and save it in the collection variables called async ops transaction ID. And then I can use the get request which is a get progress or status of async operations in devices to see if the request has succeeded or failed. Here, it succeeded. I can do the same to assign a subscription key that will allow me to operate and manage and control the device through the uh, workspace. So I can assign a a subscription key. The subscription key has previously been added to the workspace inventory using the subscription here, uh, adding a subscription post command. So I already uh, created, added the subscription key in the workspace inventory, and I can assign it to the device by specifying the device ID in the query and send it. Again, it's an asynchronous operation. I want to check the operation, the status of the operation. It succeeded. And I can validate or check the detailed information about the device um, in the workspace inventory. So I using a get command by specifying and filtering on the serial number of the device I want to, to check. And you can see here in the response that you see the application. So he has an ID, a region, a subscription. So everything is filled in and set. So this means that my device has been assigned to a service to manage it. And the license key or subscription key has been assigned to this device. And again, over operation, during operations or over time, you may want to unassign the device from a service or unassign a subscription key from a, uh, to a device by using the uh, same kind of patch command, but this is an unassigned command by specifying nothing in the subscription key for this device ID that is specified in the patch URL. I send it. Again, it's uh, 202 accepted command, so this is an asynchronous operation. I can do the same to unassign a service to a device by specifying a blank uh, information for the application in the data payload of the command. 
So I run it. Again, it's accepted. And if I check again my device and run it, the get command for this device, you see that the application region subscription is now set to null. This means that this device has not been assigned to a service to manage it or no license key has been assigned to it. And to finish it, my demo very quickly, uh, you see that uh, Mathieu has shown you how to use the try it function from the HP GreenLake developer portal and the documentation of the API. You can do the same here by using Postman making a query and you want, for example, to to see uh, all the logs that have been that has been generated um, on the workspace for from a specific date and time, for example. So here I limit the output to ten um, items return, and I, you can see here that I try to so I you see that the device has been unassigned from an application central, which is Aruba central. Uh, the subscription key has been unassigned. You can see that previously I assigned the device a subscription key. Same for, uh, I assigned the device to the application Aruba central. I uh, uh, disassociate the user for my personal email address. And uh, I have um, user email successfully sent to invited workspace. So this is a way for you to track and control uh, what has been done in the workspace. With that, I will I completed my demo. So I will stop sharing and put the information in the Q and A section of this uh, was of this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Denis. I see a lot of questions. We try our best to answer the questions, but feel free to ask some more. So this is all good. We've seen how you can do calls to the API through the GreenLake Developer Portal. We've seen how you can do it through Postman. But what if you want to write a little bit of code to do the to access this API? So this is what I'm trying to do now. What I will do is I will use code that we've put in this uh, GLP API tooling community GitHub repo. Uh, I created the same uh, code for uh, using the um, uh, audit log API that uh, Mathieu and Denis showed, but this time from Python, PowerShell or Bash, I will use only one. I'll pick PowerShell, for example. And then uh, I cloned the repo on my local laptop I, and I use Visual Studio code to open it and show it to you. And then we'll just, uh, I'll show you quickly the code because we're running out of time and I want Fred to show you the, the workshop. So let me bring up quickly uh, Visual Studio. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Visual Studio, but anyway, this is the layout of the repo. Uh, so there's a folder called scripts. And if you look in scripts, you will find uh, something called spy workspace. So it looks like it's a, it's a spy thing, but it's just to, collect data from from uh, the, the the event log by polling at uh, every minute in my, in my particular case. So let's take a quick look at, uh, at the code. Because I'm running this in a script, I need to know the client ID and the client secret. Um, if I don't have that information in environment, environment variables, which I can set uh, prior to running the code, I will prompt the user for these. I have already set those variables, so we don't have to mess around with that. And then the next thing is that I would like, similar to what Denny did with the Postman collection, I need to collect a token. Um, so I will do that by uh, invoking a web request um, and passing, you know, uh, more or less everything Denny did already, but this time we do it in PowerShell. And we have a body that is assembled as a string where I insert the client ID and the client secret. I invoke the request to get the token. I can use PowerShell try um, exception handler, so try catch. So if there is a problem, I will display a nice message that says, sorry, you can get a token. If, but if I don't get a message, I can extract the token from that and, and PowerShell provide lots of good command 
to convert from JSON. So I can just get the access token and store into a variable. And then I can uh, go into an infinite loop, which will probably wait until uh, you control C or the token expires. And somebody asked the question, token is uh, time to live is two hours. Uh, and what we do in this loop is we compute the date minus one minute, uh, and then we collect all the event logs since the last minute. And we call this uh, the same code that Denis did from Postman, v bit, V1 beta one for audit log. And we filter on start time equal the date that we computed. Uh, we trap the error in case of an error, so that's always good. And then we display the result. In fact, I already started the the code uh, during uh, the discussion. So I can see everything that Mathieu did. Uh, Mathieu uh, logged in, uh, loaded the workspace. Uh, he, he granted, he created a new access token. So this is really an event log on my workspace. And I can see that uh, uh, somebody, probably Fred was getting bored. So he, uh, he did something with John Doe. And uh, Denis started his demo. So we see all the, he invited uh, himself to a workspace, he dissociated user and so on and so forth. So, um, and he unassigned. So we can see that the event log spire, if you want, is working and every minute, it just displays the information that he finds. This could be done in a, in a GUI or something else or deported in another application or whatever. So that's, that's all I wanted to show. I have the same code for, in uh, Python and in Bash, for those who would like to see that. Um, we won't have time to do that now, but just to give you an idea of how you could use these API to build scripts. Let me go back to the slideware for now. Okay, so by the way, in the slide, you will have all these demos into uh, screen capture. So. So you can easily um, simulate a demo if you want uh, through uh, by running the, the PowerPoint. Quick point number two, let me fire up this. Uh, this is just to ask you, and, and we'd like to have your feedback on that. What kind of uh, application or SDK or things should be done with on top of this API to help uh, with uh, using the API and the GreenLake platform. And also, if you think we missed some other components, then feel free to add. If you think about one use case that you think we should focus on, then you can also dump here very quickly uh, the answer there. And be, while I leave this up, I will uh, ask Fred to, well, let one quick word about what's next for the API. Each release will have additional API to existing services and uh, add more services. So for example, I said earlier that in the last release, there's uh, now the Sustainability Insight Center API, and there is also the uh, catalog um, service. So um, each release uh, will, will come up with additional APIs. Also, we, we will have an eventing framework in place uh, using webhooks. This is also something we're working on. Additional resources, so that's uh, where you can find more details. So if you go to the, of course, the developer portal for the API reference, uh, the G GLP API tooling repo we reference with Denis and myself, um, you can find this here. Um, we have some blogs that we wrote, Denis wrote three, I wrote one, and Fred wrote one. We, you can find those blogs in our developer.hp.com community website in the blog section. And then we have our meetups and our mention and learn. We try to focus on, on GreenLake as much as we can. Uh, so feel free to attend. And we have the workshop on demand. And before I end off to, to Fred, we have the, the Slack channel where you can ask questions. Sorry, Fred. It's all yours. I should have never agreed on being the last one in the list anyway. <laughs> So yes. let me share my screen. Okay, hopefully you can all see my screen. So very quickly, because we don't, we're running out of time. Uh, the workshops on demand. It's a program that we're running for some time now. So start with the developer.hp.com. Go in the skill up section. Click on the workshop on demand tile. You will end up in the wonderful hack shack where you can have the catalog of workshops. And this is where you'll be able to register for a given workshop. So there are categorized and the one that we're interested in today is the foundational 
API for HP GreenLake H2 Cloud Platform. So just click on register, enter your email, full name, company name, accept the terms and condition. This one is okay for two hours, register. Whenever you're done, you'll be receiving an email with the credentials, a welcome email providing you details on how to access the, the environment. And then you will be able to start the, the, work, the workshop, sorry. Every single workshop comes with a readme file that uh, somehow uh, gives you all the, the background information that is needed to run the, the, the workshop. Information like uh, Edge to Cloud Platform, the APIs, and so on. And you have a set of workshops and somehow the, the, the given the, the workshop that I'm showing to you today is summarizing all the different things that you've seen in this call today. So the first lab is actually the very same thing that uh, Mathieu did at the beginning of the lab being working with the developer uh, portal and making a first call using a token. And then you'll be doing some uh, some stuff around uh, a simple scenario, use case being the very same one that Denis somehow described as well, which is you know onboarding uh, users in your workspace, onboarding device, uh, adding subscription, and so on. And we're allowing you to do this in curl, in Python, or PowerShell. For the sake of the of the example, I'll be showing you very quickly uh, the curl one. So I've already uh, set some variables here, okay, at the beginning of the of the workshop. So each, as I said, each workshop is a series of cells. If you're not familiar with notebooks, with Jupyter notebooks, some of them are instructions and some of them are actually real code cells, okay? And this one, for instance, is just setting up all the variables that are needing, needed, sorry, for the workshops to run. So, you know, the uh, your student ID, the uh, endpoint for the APIs, the workspace ID, and so on and so forth. Whenever you're done, you obviously need to get a token that I did already. So I run this command uh, to get a, a student token. And when I have the token as a variable, I can uh, actually use it. And then I can start you know, sh looking at the workspace. So we can see that the workspace has been created in 2021 by Mathieu and, uh, and so on and so forth. So I can go and actually check if I wanted to in the, oops, sorry, that's the wrong one. And I need to move my windows a bit. Uh, I can check in my workspace at the very same time what I'm doing. So I can manage the workspace. I can do an invitation. So I, at the beginning, I'm acting as an admin and I will be inviting a student, which is the student that I had. Okay, so the student that me, I mean, the cell got executed properly. Okay, so I can move on with the other cells. Okay, then I can check the invitation status. Okay, so I will see that my user has been invited. And as Denny was showing earlier on, the status has been verified. Okay, so this means that my student, my student now is part of the work of the workspace. What I want to do later is actually assign him uh, a proper role. So uh, uh, at the beginning, the user is a uh, is only sorry. Uh, Oops, is only, as you can see, uh, an observer. And later on, you'll become an, uh, an operator to allow him to actually perform some more uh, operation like onboarding, devising, onboarding devices, uh, adding subscription, uh, application, uh, uh, association, and so on and so forth. I won't go further because I don't have much time and we're already running out of time. But uh, it's available uh, on, uh, for free, uh, 24 by 7. Just go on the URL, give it a try, register. You'll get an email within two minutes, and you'll be able to do the very same workshop and uh, test all the different APIs uh, for this, uh, I would say, simple use case of an IT admin onboarding users and devices. Back to you, Didier. I'm stopping the share. Thank you, Fred. And sorry for leaving so little time for the workshop on demand. I, I guess believe, people have to try it. Uh, we we launched the poll in a, a kind of a hurry uh, for the quick questions. And then this is the one for the end of session poll, just to find out about the usefulness of uh, these kind of sessions. Thanks for giving us uh, answer there and good and feedback. Um, we, we have a lot of call to action here, but it's really about learning the APIs. And there's a lot of tools for doing that, whether it's our blogs, uh, the documentation of the API, uh, using the workshop on demand from Fred to learn a little bit uh, with hands-on experience. Give it a try. Um, you can write your own code if you want. Uh, you can even submit it to us. We'll put it in the, the sample code repo. Uh, we'll be happy to do so. It's really uh, operating as a community here. 
you can contribute, uh, of course, as I said, and we need you to also amplify to your customers when you're meeting with customers. We have API, let's talk about it now and um, invite your customer to learn and try it as well. Uh, with that, thanks a lot uh, for your patience. I know we are late and uh, sorry about this uh, three or four minutes that we, uh, we uh, went over, uh, but thanks for your time and uh, have a great rest of your day, everyone where you are. Bye-bye.